Good morning. I'm Pastor Tom Knazer from Woodlawn Lutheran Church. It would be my privilege to proclaim God's word to you today in the sermon. This is the beginning of, during the month of May, the pastors in the merged congregations will be preaching at each other's churches. So you will have me today uh, on this Mother's Day. We'll focus, though, especially on the fact that this weekend in the church calendar is the Good Shepherd Sunday. We focus on Jesus as our loving and tender shepherd. It's also a, a good application of it to, for today being Mother's Day as well, the tender care that not only especially Jesus gives, but also those women who raised us uh, in our childhood and still watch over us even today. So God's blessings on your worship today. We start with our opening hymn, hymn number 918. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
We'll now join together in singing the first three verses of hymn 938, This is the Feast. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson this morning comes from the book of Acts, and it comes from an incident during Paul's first missionary journey where he is spreading the gospel message to some of the Jewish people in one of the synagogues in Sidian Antioch. Paul explains how Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament scriptures and how he then fulfilled all of those prophecies. This is an assurance to us that God will fulfill all the promises that he will make to us also. From the Gospel of Acts, chapter 13. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, if you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Brothers, children of Abraham and God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus. Yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our Father, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second Psalm, You are my son. Today I have become your father. The fact that God raised him from the dead never to decay is stated in these words. I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, 
you will not let your Holy One see decay. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now join together in reading Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He guides me in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second lesson this morning comes from the book of Revelation. And here John gives us a beautiful vision of the joy that we will have in heaven, where our good shepherd reigns supreme, and we will live forever with him in the bliss and eternal joy that we have because of his victory over death. From Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. We'll now hear a song from our school choir. Please note, they will sing the first two verses of hymn 870, and then the congregation will join together for verses 3 and 4.
Please stand for the gospel of our Lord. In our gospel lesson this morning, we hear how some of the Jewish leaders were questioning how Jesus could be this claim to be the Son of God. And Jesus tells them that because they are not his sheep, they will not follow him. But then he speaks to us and reminds us that he is our good shepherd and that he is there watching over us and that no one will be able to snatch us out of the hand of our loving Savior. This will also serve as the basis of our sermon this morning. From John chapter 10. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple area walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you did not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. We'll now join together in confessing our faith according to the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We'll join together in singing the hymn of the day, hymn 553.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, God's word for our devotion today is from the gospel lesson that the vicar read a moment ago from John chapter 10. Brothers and sisters in Christ, big issues on the minds of a lot of people today, safety, security, protection. Nobody wants to feel vulnerable, alone, afraid of the future, afraid of the dark. Today in our country, most people are taking time to honor someone who helped them deal with those issues as they grew up. Someone who was there when they needed, well, when they were afraid as children, when they needed a hug, when they needed, well, to take care of them. Mother's Day, for many of us, well, thank God, not just today, but every day, if, if you were blessed with a mother who did watch over you, who was loving and kind and good, especially if she was vital in bringing you to know Jesus. From her, you probably were provided with a great deal of emotional and, and spiritual support and security. But when we look at our world today, well, there seem to be all kinds of issues that, well, threaten that. Issues that even mothers can't solve or protect us from. The ongoing effects of pandemic, mental health crisis that seems to have mushroomed from that. The wave of crime and violence in our society. The specter of war in our world. There's a word that describes it, mayhem. Now, maybe when you hear that word, you think of, maybe if you watch some TV, you've seen the Allstate Insurance Company commercials with that guy, that actor, who portrays mayhem. He causes cars to crash, homes to be destroyed or damaged by fire, by windstorms, carelessness. And if you don't have their insurance, the implication is those incidents and those accidents can, can be very expensive to repair, create mayhem in your personal individual lives. And so they ask, are you in good hands, protected from mayhem? They're the good hands people. If you've been around, you know they've been using that slogan for decades. You're in good hands with all state. What about when it comes to spiritual mayhem? danger. We all face temptation. We've all got that sinful nature inside of us that leads us into doing things or saying things or even just thinking things that we know, well, they know, we know it caused dis disruption in our lives, and especially serious harm in our relationship with our God. We've got worries and fears about how we're going to manage our way through life's trials and pains and mayhem. What's the solution? On this Good Shepherd weekend, our loving Savior gives us words of encouragement and hope so that we can confidently say, you're in good hands with Jesus. Now that picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is, is obviously familiar to you folks here at Good Shepherd's Lutheran Church. We just read responsively Psalm 23, which, which brings out the, the, the care and the concern and uh, the, the blessings that our Lord gives to us as we make our way through that valley of the shadow of death. Whatever it takes, that's what the good shepherd will, will provide. He's ready and willing to do for his sheep. Now, the context of our gospel lesson today takes place in the city of Jerusalem. In Solomon's Colonnade, that was a, kind of like a porch area, apparently surrounding the temple there in Jerusalem. And the religious leaders here surrounded Jesus as he was walking through that colonnade or porch one day, told even December, probably there the Feast of Dedication, that's Hanukkah. You know, right before Christmas time, we're familiar with that. Well, they surrounded Jesus and they demanded, how long are you going to keep us in suspense? You're going to keep toying with us, uh, you know, raising our hopes, causing us, uh, you know, to wonder, are you the Christ? If you are, tell us plainly. 
Now, they asked this not because they didn't know Jesus' claims, but because they wanted it, him to confess it openly so that they could then accuse him of blasphemy, which was the final outcome, in a sense, of the, his trial before the Sanhedrin on early morning of Good Friday. They never considered that Jesus could possibly be the Christ. And he, here he doesn't come up flat out and say it either. Rather, he shows them all that he had done, that he'd given them all the proof they needed. I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. Yeah, Jesus saw right through them. And so instead of mouthing the words that they wanted to hear, he points to his miracles. He had done things only the promised Messiah could do. Fellow Pharisee, Nicodemus, a few months earlier, had come to him and said, hey, we see that you're doing things, miraculous things that only God can do. He wanted to learn more about Jesus. Or just a couple months earlier, right there in Jerusalem, he had... He had healed a man who was born blind. He'd healed another man who'd been an invalid for 38 years. Could anybody but the promised Messiah do those things? Yes, Jesus pointed them that he was the powerful shepherd that they were looking for, but they still did not believe in him. Do you? How many miracles have you seen that Jesus did right in front of your eyes. But a few weeks ago, we relived his greatest miracle, didn't we? Came and conquered sin and death. The good shepherd laid down his life for the sheep so that the power of sin and death and hell and Satan could be overthrown. Our sins are forgiven as that shepherd became the Lamb of God, offering himself as that full payment to defeat those enemies of ours that bring mayhem into our lives. He defeated death, even. Rose again from that grave. Showed himself alive at, on at least a dozen different occasions before his ascension. Could there be any more mortal who can accomplish those things? No, we have a shepherd who puts his power on display in the words of the Bible for us. More than 30 miracles recorded there. The disciples testifying to those miracles as we heard in, the, in the, the lesson from the book of Acts. And he puts that work on display in our personal lives. Our good shepherd, maybe we don't recognize him as that, but he's the one who sets that table before us, overflowing with gifts. Think of in your, in your personal lives how, how he provides for us. It protects us. He may not feed us miraculously like he did with the 5,000. And maybe we're putting up with rising prices and empty shelves in the grocery stores and retail and, and supply chain issues and all of that. But I'm pretty safe in thinking that most of us aren't starving, don't have a place to sleep at night. Our good shepherd provides for us generously. Look at the medical advances that we get to take advantage of in our world today with our physical, for our physical well-being. I just became a grandfather. My daughter's granddaughter spent almost two weeks in the NICU out in South Dakota, well taken care of, was able to come home this past Thursday, get the privilege of baptizing her next week. Then God sends his guardian angels to us watch over us, and maybe we don't even recognize or realize how much they protect us from. The car accident you might have almost had on the freeway or driving down the street. God's guardian angels are watching over us at the command of our good shepherd. And even when troubles do come our way, God sustains us and encourages us in the midst of them, assures us that well, Romans 8, 28, he works all things out for the good of those who rest in his love. He comforts us by telling us in his word that nothing will happen to us without his knowing about and without him giving the strength for us to bear up under it, testing our faith at times, maybe even severely. And in the midst of every trouble, he invites us, come to me, 
All you who are weary and burdened, come. Come with your prayers, your requests, his promise to hear and fulfill them. Yeah, our good shepherd has gone to the limit and beyond for us. He's taken care of our biggest trouble, of course, by forgiving our sins and conquering death. And if that doesn't make us feel secure, I don't know what will. You are safe in his hands. Now, who gets the benefits of all those blessings that our good shepherd does? In one sense, all people do. Jesus came and he died for everyone. You're never going to run into somebody whose sins Jesus did not pay for. God so loved not just Wells Lutherans, but God so loved the world. God was in Christ reconciling the world, not counting men's sins against them. His blood covers every single sin, no matter how bad a person may think they've sinned no matter what their age, their gender, their race, their language. The good shepherd gave his life for them all. But sadly, as we see here, not everybody accepts the work that that shepherd did for them. Not everybody's going to be part of his flock. We want as many people to become part of that. We're going to work hard as a new congregation to reach out into our community, to touch souls with that good message that they too can be safe in the hands of Jesus. But he says here, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Yeah, the ones who are safe in Jesus' hands are those who have a relationship with him, who recognize him, who believe that Jesus is that one sent from God to bring them to the pastures of heaven where there will be no more hunger or thirst, no more persecution or pain as we heard from the saints gathered around the throne in John's vision of heaven. Isn't that what you believe about him? If so, then you are among his dearly loved sheep. You're doing right now what one of those signs is. You're listening to the voice of your good shepherd. That's why we regularly gather and encourage all our people to be in God's house to listen to what their shepherd has to say to them to hear those words of forgiveness and comfort, to strengthen our faith. That's why we encourage you to, to read your Bibles at home, to have those family devotions, to come to the Bible classes here at church. We call on his name in prayer to, to, to listen to him talk to us through his word and see how that then is worked out in our lives in the answers that God gives to us in prayer. Those are the marks of his sheep. They're the ones who receive gifts, the gifts that he tells us about in his word. And among those gifts we've already mentioned, but especially we can never emphasize enough, and that's the gift of salvation, of eternal life in heaven. These Jews, sadly, were going to miss out on that if they remained in their unbelief, if they refused to listen to the voice of the good shepherd and follow him, they will die in their sins and not end up in heaven. But for those who do hear his voice, for those who do follow him, who believe in Jesus as their Savior, they will never perish, he says here. Yeah, even though we're going to, to die in this life, we know that, well, we shall go on living. Our souls will immediately be taken to heaven to remain there in rest until that last day. When Jesus raises our bodies again, reunites them with their souls, transforms us, gives us those bodies that will be immortal, imperishable, and we will live forever with our Savior in heaven. We will be part of that throng around the throne that we heard about today. Those are the truths of Easter which bring us peace and comfort and security even as we face the mayhem of this life. There's another gift here. Talks about he knows us. In our society where more and more people are doing what we call cocooning, you know, isolating themselves from the world, whether forced like it was for those several months or almost a couple years, you might say, no, our Savior still knows us. Even if we are kind of quarantining ourselves. He knows us individually. We're not just a name on a Social Security card or a Medicare card. No, he doesn't get us mixed up with somebody else. 
doesn't forget our name, as I'm sure your past, the pastors over the next year or so will maybe don't remember everybody's name. I don't know everybody in this room. It's going to take a while for us to get to know one another, but Jesus knows us. Jesus knows us intimately. He knows our problems and our needs, our strengths and our weaknesses. He knows when to step in, when to give us the exact kind of help that we need at that moment. He does care. He is concerned. That's why he says here, no one can snatch them out of my hand. You're in good hands with Jesus. And it's not just him. He's got a partner, in a sense. These, these men wanted proof that Jesus was the Christ, the promised Messiah, but he'd already given them plenty of evidence, as I said, but, and, and, and there would be even more in the future. As the second person of the Trinity, Jesus has an intimate connection with his Father in heaven. My Father who has given these sheep to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. We've got two sets of hands, in a sense, taking care of us. Double dose. Father and Son have the same goal in mind. They want you to be in heaven. They want you to remain part of God's flock as you would go through life. Yes, God so loved the world, and that includes you and me. Father will go to the limit to protect and care for us just as Jesus does. And what is there that he can't do? He's the almighty God. He's greater than all, Jesus says here. No one, nothing can snatch us out of his hands either. The Father in heaven, the Son sent from heaven, they've got the same goals in mind when it comes to our salvation. He wants us. What a com feeling of complete security that ought to give us as we go through life. We have eternal life waiting for us in heaven. Because it's a gift from God that's ours simply through faith in Jesus, this gift is ours with no strings attached. Forgiveness of sins, eternal life, that's yours. That's a sure thing. The Son paid for it. The Father guarantees it. As human beings, we want peace. We crave security and love. For the early years of our lives, we probably got that best from that person we call mom. Now we look for that kind of protection from mayhem, not from good insurance policies, but from a Savior who loves us. We have eternal security that lasts beyond the grave. Ours from a loving shepherd and a loving father. Yes, we are indeed in the best of hands with Jesus. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue on page 10 in your worship folder singing Create in Me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. O Lord, the stories of your compassion are endless. May we always look to your mercy and be moved to give you offerings that reflect our confidence in your promises. Hear us for Jesus' sake. Amen. 
This morning in our prayers, we include a prayer for Renee Kane and Tom Barron, who both will be undergoing surgery this week. Jesus, you are both our loving shepherd and the lamb who sits on the throne. To you be blessing and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and might forever and ever. Lord, our shepherd, in you we lack nothing, and we fear no evil, for you are with us. Let us hear your voice, that we are not led astray by the madness of the world, but follow you closely on your righteous path. In you we lack nothing. Bring more people to join that multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Let your word of salvation reach the ends of the earth through the witness of your people. Shepherd those who shepherd your people. Feed them in the green pastures of your word and refresh them in the quiet waters of your cleansing grace that they may faithfully feed and tend your lambs and sheep. Like sheep, we have all gone astray. Graciously forgive our sins and restore our souls by your Holy Spirit that we may remain in your word and in steadfast faith. In your great mercy, wipe away every tear from the eyes of those who are sad, sick, or in the shadow of death. Spread the tent of your protection over them and assure them that no one can snatch them from your hand. Almighty God, we commend to your care Tom and Renee as they undergo surgery. Thank you for the blessings of doctors and medical workers with great skill and knowledge. Bless their work so that your servants may enjoy relief and recovery from their afflictions. With confidence in your faithful love, we place them into your hands. Our Father in heaven, from whom every family in heaven and earth receives its name, you describe your tender comfort as being like a mother's comfort. We give you thanks for providing love and care through our mothers. Give Christian mothers strength and wisdom from your word that they may glorify you in all they do and be a blessing to their children. And Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you came to seek the lost and gather them to your fold. Have compassion on those who have wandered from you. Feed those who hunger, bind up those who are broken in heart, and strengthen those who are weak, that they may rely on your care. Find comfort in your love and abide in your guidance all the days of their lives. For your name's sake, amen. And let us join together in the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at Good Shepherds, and according to the command of our Lord, we follow the practice of close communion. And so we ask only those who are in fellowship with our church body and our members of our church or other churches that we are in fellowship would come forward for Holy Communion this morning. If you are a visitor who is not in fellowship, please know that we welcome you and are glad that you are here and would love for you to commune with us in the future. Uh, Please speak to one of the pastors after the service to find out more about that. And then just a note for communion this morning, please remember that the wine is the darker colored liquid and the grape juice is the lighter colored. If you would like to have the common cup, please indicate and I will assist you with that. Our service continues with the preface in the middle of page 11. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God through Jesus Christ our Lord, and we praise you especially for the glorious resurrection of your Son, the true Passover Lamb, who by his sacrifice took away the sins of the world and by his resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, 
we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
Please stand. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. We will join together in singing our closing hymn, hymn 804. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in the congregation this morning. A special welcome to all our guests and visitors who are with us this morning. A thank you to our third and fourth graders for beautifying our service with your song. A thank you to Pastor Knazer for preaching this morning.
Uh, just a few announcements to highlight for you. Please do take the opportunity to read through the announcements in the bulletin as there are quite a few of them. Uh, just three calendar things to highlight for you this morning. One in two weeks, so not next Sunday, but the Sunday after, May 22nd, we'll be having our annual voters meeting. Uh, please note, Arbor Day is scheduled for, uh, for uh, May 14th. And then just another announcement to mark that date on your calendars for July 24th will be the church picnic. And may God bless the rest of your week.